Good morning, everyone. A while back, I posted a video on how I prune and train my indeterminate tomato plants. Well, after posting that video, I had quite a few questions from folks asking me to share how I prune my determinate tomato plants. Today, I'm gonna to share just that. Now, the same thing goes that I mentioned on that indeterminate tomato video, and that is that there are as many ways to prune tomatoes as there are YouTube channels on the internet. But your method of pruning determinate tomatoes should be determined by your ultimate goal. So if your goal is the largest fruit size or the absolute heaviest crop load off of your tomato plants, this may not be the optimal pruning method for you. My goal focuses on plant health and avoiding disease. So here in Ohio, we deal with warm to hot and very humid conditions during the summers, which leads to a lot of issues with bacterial and fungal diseases in tomatoes. So I am dealing with blight, septoria leaf spot, bacterial speck and spot, all of these conditions which are exacerbated by lack of air circulation and not giving my plants enough room to breathe, basically. So when I prune, I focus on providing plenty of air circulation. I also focus on making sure that none of the foliage on the bottom of the plants is touching the soil. And that is because some of those diseases that I mentioned are actually spread when the spores in the soil splash up and hit the bottom of the plant foliage during something like a heavy rain or overhead irrigation. I mulch the soil surface to avoid that as well, but getting rid of any of that foliage near the bottom of the plant helps with those issues also. And I have a few other specific things that I'm focusing on during pruning, and I'll mention those throughout the course of the video, but this is a fairly quick and easy process. It is not complicated in any way. So let me show you how I prune my determinant tomatoes. Now, the first thing I wanna mention is that I do typically like to tackle this pruning task before the plants are at this stage. So optimally, before they really start setting fruit, definitely before they have this heavy of a crop load on them, but I'm just kind of behind on everything this year, so I am just now getting to this. It isn't really gonna hurt the plants, it's just a lot easier to do this before these things have a heavy crop load on them. So the first step in pruning these tomatoes is sanitizing my cutting tool. So a standard bleach solution will work. I'm using a disinfectant with Tymol in it, but at the very minimum, you want to disinfect your pruning tool between every plant, and that's gonna help minimize the spread of any disease from plant to plant. So my focus is on the base of the plants here. I typically remove any branches coming off the bottom couple inches of the plant. I do this by cutting as flush to the main stem as possible. This isn't a hard and fast rule. If there is one large branch coming off the main stem that is loaded with fruit, I may leave it. But in general, I'm looking to clear eight to 12 inches of space between the soil surface and the first branches and foliage. Next, I remove any smaller stems and leaves that are touching or within eight to 12 inches of touching the ground. Now, a word on suckers. Suckers by definition are vigorous vertical growth originating from the root system or lower main stem of a plant. Plant suckers are typically undesirable because they sap plants' energy, but what we've commonly called suckers on tomatoes in the gardening world are actually just stems, and we don't really have any definitive research on whether pruning them does anything to benefit us. A study done by Iowa State University showed that sometimes pruning suckers made a difference in fruit size, and sometimes it didn't, but the study did not find that pruning helped in any way to increase the overall yield. Long story short, I don't focus on trimming out suckers or stems on my determinate tomatoes. If I have an incredibly dense tomato plant where I feel like it's not getting enough air throughout the entire plant, I may trim out a few secondary stems to open it up a bit. Or if I have a wonky branch that's sticking out in some obnoxious way, I'll trim it off, but that's about it. So overall, you'll notice that I don't really do any other pruning in the middle or tops of the plants. This is because I wanna leave the majority of this canopy of foliage intact to both protect from sun scald on the fruit and because the flavor of tomatoes will suffer if plants are overly defoliated. 
Typically mid-July begins a slow, or sometimes fast depending on the year, progression of diseases that cause foliar die off. Knowing that I'm going to lose at least some of this foliage, I wanna leave as much intact now as I can. The next focus is to remove any foliage that is already showing signs of disease. Sometimes this can help slow down the spread of disease, especially to other tomatoes in the garden that are still healthy. So this is a task that continues through the season. I regularly check for any new signs of diseased foliage and trim it out. Now, side note, if you are dealing with similar conditions, similar diseases as I am here, you can do a preventative copper spray. So in very, very heavy pressure years, I've used a product called Soap Shield. But the important thing with that is that you have to start it as a preventative. Once you see signs of the disease, it's very, very hard to stop the progression. You might be able to slow it. Usually you can't stop it. So once I get all of the material pruned out that I want removed, I do pick up all of the branches, all of the fruit, everything that I've removed, and I dispose of it. So I know some folks just put their tomato trimmings, even diseased ones, directly in the compost pile, and there are definitely diseases that are killed off by the heat of a compost pile. Because I am dealing with such a mix of different persistent pathogens, I just play it safe, take my tomatoes and dispose of them in a completely different spot than the rest of my composting material. I also am careful to get it quite a distance away from the garden. Another option would be just to pack it in like black garbage bags or something because you can cook off most of the pathogens that way. But mainly I just wanna get it out and away from my healthy tomato plants. Now a final word, and maybe I should have mentioned this first, but I do typically always grow my determinate tomatoes in these tomato cages. I find that these are the easiest solution for supporting determinate tomatoes. These are the kind that just fold up and store away when you're done with them every season, but these are sturdy enough that they stay upright even while supporting heavy tomatoes and even during summer storms, while still being relatively easy to set up and use. The important thing is that I put these on my tomatoes as soon as I transplant them out. So tomatoes typically grow like weeds. I find Find that if I wait, if I'm like, oh, I'll just transplant these tomatoes and then go out and set the cages, you know, whatever, a week from now, that week often turns into a month. And by that point, it's really difficult to get the cages over the tomato plants without breaking things. So I've just made it a practice to set these the same day that I'm transplanting. Now I do not like these for indeterminates. Your indeterminate plants get too tall. Mine often end up flopping and breaking if I try to use these tomato supports. Even with the double tall version, it works okay, but I definitely prefer my tomato panel trellis for my indeterminate tomatoes. If you've not checked that video out, I will link that above. So that's it. Like I said, a pretty quick and easy process. And I'd love if you'd share with me what your primary goal is when pruning your determinate tomato plants. And if you found today's video helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel, Grow Fully with Jenna. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.